Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome to my brand new Let's Play series in Manor Lords. Manor Lords is a historical city builder with RTS elements. The game releases into early access on April 26th, and it's been developed by a solo dev. I just want to extend a big thank you to Hunted Horse for sending me the game early to check it out. I've spent a few hours with it so far, and I am loving it. I feel I've got a good grasp of the mechanics now, and hopefully I'll be able to teach you everything you need to know. Now, if you like this series and you want to see more, please consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and if you've got questions or feedback, drop it down in the comments, and I'll be able to help. Also, this series will be uploaded daily, and then every second day once we get the first few episodes out. But if you want to get the next two right now, so you can binge the series, you can become a channel member and get instant access before they release for everyone. Alright, without further delay, let's begin. Now, I've decided to go with just the default settings for this first run, where we have to defend against an encroaching baron who's gobbling up territories. If people want to see me take on more of a challenge, then we'll do a hard mode run with limited resources next time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this land of pure opportunity. Welcome to Manor Lords. It's actually real. I was starting to have my doubts. It looks like the people themselves were. They're just staring off, looking at the vista like, holy hell. He he actually did it. The son of a bitch did it. <laughs> Early access, nevertheless, but still quite the feat. So before we get familiar with the UI and explain the gameplay systems, we should just take a quick moment to check our victory conditions and get the lay of the land. Dominance. Build up your town to your manor, and when ready, press claims towards regions owned by your opponents. Once a claim has been pressed, be ready for battle. Oh, I'll unite these lands under my rule. I have no doubt about it. Alright, so, let's get the lay of the land and see where we're currently at. So, it looks like we're in the very central southern region of this overall regional map, and to our north is the dastardly Sir Hildebilt von Berenut. <laughs> just rolls off the tongue. So he's actually starting with two territories. A little bit of a head start, you know, but we'll catch up, I have no doubt. And all of the neutral territories in between are going to be occupied by the outlaws. Bandits, raiders, that sort of thing. They're going to be popping up camps periodically and launching raids into both of our territories as we strive to occupy and claim these various things. We'll go to war with each other once our borders, once there's nowhere left to go, basically. Uh, I don't know if you can actually attack before then. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe we could get the jump on him. So if we were to just quickly check our region down here and see what's available to us, we can just have a brief overview of the resources, right? So every single region has the same types of resources. No one is shortchanged from missing something completely, but instead the volumes and the placement are randomized every time you play. And you can start in any of these other regions too. So we've started in a pretty good spot, quite far away from him, so that's good. And it looks like we've actually got two resources which are quite valuable. So we have a rich iron deposit, which is super valuable, like super lucky on that roll. And the same goes true for the wild animals. Gotta say, might be one of the best rolls you could possibly get, at least for what I've seen. Because really, you want some extra food to help you through the early game, and you want some extra iron to help you through the mid to late game, making weapons, that sort of thing. So having these two off the rip is great. I wouldn't really want clay or stone. But berries I would have taken as a rich deposit as well. And of course, we have other rich deposits nearby, right? We have the clay in the northern region above us, stone in the eastern region. So we'll make use of all that as well, no doubt. Now, if we press the construction menu using C, we can then have a look at the overlays, see where the groundwater placements are, various fertilities. That's probably something we'll be kind of low on here, if I was to guess. Rye actually looks okay. Uh, and that's just because we're up sort of high. You know, we had that nice vista to look down on, and that basically means less fertile the higher up you go. Um, so, you know, farming might be a bit of a struggle, but we'll see how we get on. All right, so our plucky little band of adventurers right here. Oh, actually, just remembered something. Oh, yeah, and worth mentioning that the actual first band of camp is right next to us. Here it is here. Bunch of good-for-nothing no life scrapping with each other and testing out their equipment. So we'll feel their wrath soon enough. So we got to basically prepare uh, to be ready for their first attack. And also, multiple bandit camps can start to pop up in the same region and really um, make it a lot tougher to kind of conquer them as well over time. All right, so focusing back on us for a little bit, let's get building. So there's lots to talk about in the game, so much to go through, but we want these guys just to get set up, get building some basic stuff, and then we can kind of talk while they're doing it because the game is fairly slow. And I don't want to be triple speeding all the time. Uh, but it's just slow by nature of it being a sort of realistic kind of game, right? It takes a while to bring your materials to places to get things built. 
Alright, so just pulling back for a minute, deciding where we're actually going to place our first buildings. I'm thinking somewhere out here to the left. So what we want to do is set up logging industries, right? And, and firewood and all that kind of stuff. And we have iron up here and we have clay, so it feels like a bit more of an industrial area up here. Further down, we have then the food, right? We've got the wild animals and the berries. And then across from there, we have stone. Stone, I feel like we won't need for a while. It'll be a little far out. That's fine. So most of our industry up here, food around down here, and then the town itself over here. We won't really have much opportunities for farming until we really expand, although we can try to do a little bit, I guess. All right, so let's begin that. So to get us started, what I'm actually going to go with first is a hitching post, because we start with a little bit of regional wealth, and you can use that to get another ox. Your biggest slowdown early in the game is the time it takes for an ox to bring logs back and forth between building sites, because you're building so much. So another hitching post right up here I think would be quite valuable. So we'll place that down, we'll get our roads going, and just extend this, I guess, all the way along the tree line. To there. All right. So now we are hooked up. People are already making their way out there fairly quick. Anyways, so that's where the hitching post is going to be. It requires one timber. So if we hop back over and have a look at our ox, hopefully it's already loaded up with one and it's on its way. Where the hell is it? Oh, there it is. It was in the trees. This guy's going to guide it. I guess we put the order in before we did the road, so maybe it doesn't follow the road until afterwards on the way back. That's good. So, yep, once that brings it up there, we can get a second ox and get building a lot quicker. But we can keep building now while we're waiting. So, the next thing then would be going into the gathering tab, logging camp. So, this is going to fell nearby trees to produce timber. Pretty straightforward. And we'll just pop it in right around here, I guess. Next up, what do we need next? Um, well, we want to get gathering and getting some of that meat, right? So we'll get a hunting camp and we could place it nearby. We don't want to place it in that radius, right? Because obviously it'll cause migration, moving the deer to, getting the deer to move away. Sorry, the autosave just freaked me out there. Anyway, yeah, so I'm going to place the hunting camp just around here. And we'll hook up a road just to go out a bit more naturally out that way too. Just like so. So it'll be the second building. We'll just make sure, increase the priority of this to hi very high. This one to high. And then the, this one to just medium. It's already halfway done. How is that even possible? I think it's because it only needs... Oh, a hunting cost doesn't... Uh, or a hunting camp doesn't actually cost any logs. That's why. So it's halfway done already. That's good to know. All right. We got a new message. Let's see. I've heard of your renown. I only seek to defend my rights and my honor against those who would wrong me. I hope you will not judge me by the rumors and slanders that some may spread about me. That's from Sir Hildebult. I mean, I heard he couldn't satisfy his wife, and no matter how hard he tries. And I heard his children are all illegitimate, so, I mean, it's just all slander, I guess. <clears throat> Alright, the hitching post is just about done, and our ox is traveling off back to go get more supplies. So, in starting the game, we had a bunch of supplies just left by the, t uh, the kind of tents that were down there. But ideally, we want to get another ox now, so we click our hitching post, we spend 20 regional wealth, and another ox will be delivered here from off-map. A little trader is going to kind of bring one in. So they're going to get to work on this now. They can actually start building before the timber arrives, which is quite nice. They can get kind of the foundations going, and then once the material arrives, they can obviously complete the build. Oh, oh, I was just about to explain how families work, but we already have the hunting cap in stun, which leads me into this perfectly. So we're going to assign a family to basically work this building. Bonk. It's not a person. It is a family. So it could be multiple people. Uh, multiple males or female, depending on what the work is. Right now, we've got eight males and two female, and we have five families in total. One is assigned and four are unassigned. If a family is unassigned, it means that they'll work on construction. I think it means they can also help move things sometimes, but it's mostly to do with just general construction. All right, so if we just check on the hunting camp really quickly, we've got one family there at the moment, and they've set a hunting limit to 10, which means that we currently have 40 animals or thereabouts on this deposit, and it'll bring it all the way down to 10 before they'll leave it alone so they can kind of repopulate. Uh, so if we go to the people tab, we can see who's working it. We have Andreas and Hans. If we can move this out of the way, we can actually kind of see where they are. So one of them is heading in there, Hans, and Andreas is skinning the meat himself. Working away, like a good man. And you can actually see Andreas is the husband, and Hans is the son heading back up. Now, if you check their household, you can actually see the wife and everything, but we don't have houses yet, so we can't check that right now. So we'll leave it as is. So we have a few pips up here. We've got homelessness, right? We need to make five houses, and for that, we need ten logs, or timber. We've only got five currently, so we're going to be waiting for the logging camp to get done soon. That's got the higher priority right now, so that's going to get built next once that's done. We're just waiting on another log arriving, I think. 
Yeah. Once that's done, then they can start felling trees around here themselves. So just going to speed up time. You'll notice that it's gone dark. Uh, it's There's actually no day and night in the game in terms of like a day and night cycle, like hourly or anything like that. It's actually just months, right? So months are going by and a day is one, a full day is one month. Just cosmetically. It's purely cosmetic. They work during the night just the same as you want and you can turn it off if you don't want it. I just think it looks beautiful. So I've turned on day and night. Um, all right, so our construction of the logging camp is done. We'll assign a family to that. In Let's fact, we'll assign on. two. That leaves us with two unassigned families for building. So they're gonna, gonna get to work on that. That's totally fine. And uh, we're gonna have to start getting some storage, right? Our pantry, our food is exposed, and so is our generic goods, which can also get kind of damaged and broken. So we'll want some sort of storage area up here for that as well. So let's go with the logistics tab. We have the granary for food. So I need to decide where the houses are gonna go. Probably in this area here, big area there. So, and then there's food out this way. So yeah, I suppose a granary, mm, some near enough to the berries as well. So maybe a bit more central, a bit more like here between the two. We'll hook that up with roads and stuff, of course. And you, the roads are free, and you can just dismantle them for free as well. So very flexible, and you know, you're know you not really locked into much with that, which is nice. They're more like little trails, I suppose, just to help people along. I'll we'll have to wait for that to get built. All right, so something I'm planning on doing during the series, let me know if you like it or not, is keeping things moving fairly fast when I zoom out. When I come back in, you know, when applicable, slowing it back down so we can enjoy some of the details and stuff. Because the early game especially can just be quite slow. It takes a long time to move logs. <laughs> uh, that's why I wanted to get a second ox really quickly. You could actually get a third if we really wanted to. But I think we'll keep that money for other things, like vegetables and stuff like that. We'll talk about that soon. Alright, so they're working away, chopping down their trees. The oxes need to drag it over. And in fact, something I'm going to do here is go to the advanced tab and assign an ox to be permanently working on the logging camp. Because every time they fell a tree, an ox has to go out to the tree and even just bring it back in here. And then it gets moved somewhere else in the future. So having one dedicated to just going back and forth here, life-changing. So valuable to have, have that, to have that. Just speeds things up tremendously. So dedicate an ox right there and that should be good. Um, right, so we have our granary being built. We also need a regular storage, so a storehouse. And that can go somewhere on this side, I think would make sense, because that's where we have the iron, that's where we have clay, just other materials that would go into a more generic storehouse. So yeah, why not just pop it along the road here somewhere? Seems good to me. That's got a lower priority as well. Now we're just gonna save up timber purely for houses. So that's kind of what I'm waiting for now. We need 10 in total before we can commit to the build of Burgage plots. But while we're waiting, we can kind of figure out where they're gonna go. I might just use this road as a central sort of main street and build a sort of a selection of row houses. I don't see really why not. I want the game to look as good as it can, but we will be kind of trying to fit a lot of houses in early on for growth. So just something straight up like that. And then what we could do now is rotate this around. And this is how many you could fit. Quite a lot. Now, as you can see out the back, there's a little different symbol there. And that's for the little vegetable patches or little extra things that you can add on. Now, I don't know if the size really affects it too much. Probably does somewhat. So I'm just going to go a little further up. Just a little bit. Bring that straight across and bring this down now. Maybe about there. Rotate it around again. So we could be on the street or we could build a second street in behind these. So that it's their gar garden patches and stuff are along this main street. I don't know. No, I'll tell you what. We'll rot rotate it around that way. I think that's better. Now, we can also reduce the plot divisions. And if we bring that down low enough, you get a second little symbol here. Which is like an additional house. Which is exactly what it is. You can actually fit two houses here. One is always going to be smaller than the other. Now, I don't actually know what the drawback is to that. I couldn't see one when I was testing it out. But I would imagine people are less happy in the smaller houses, or maybe they fit less people. I don't know. Uh, but either way, that's what we're going to try and go with. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Now, we can't currently... It says we can't build it because we need ten, but we have eleven. So I think I just have to redraw it because it made that choice before it realized. And we go back down... I don't see why. We've got 13. What's the problem? Construction cost? That was really strange, but I think it was just like a little bit of glitched terrain there or something because it just wouldn't let me put down the right amount. So we're going to go with just four and then I'll add a fifth one now in a second. So four plots right there. Totally fine. Bonk. And then we'll just drag this out and try to roughly space it to be the same. Just another one right here. Yeah, I've never had any problem building, actually, but, you know, it stands to reason the one time I record it, of course we do. But there we go, five plots right across the board. 
And that's going to take quite a while to build. In fact, we'll try to just get them done by priority. So this one very high, this one high, medium, low, and very low. Because otherwise they actually do try to build them all at the same time. So I much prefer just staggering it. You don't have to. Sometimes they don't. I don't really understand the rules behind that yet. Um, I think it's to do with if you have the material, they dump the material on each one. And then they kind of chip away and build them all relatively at the same time. But I'm happy just to get people into their homes one by one. That's totally fine by me and get the ones closest done first. Uh, the other thing would be that these are the homeless people's tents, right? Until they get homes, they just kind of live out here. The same goes for the supplies. Until the storehouse gets built, uh, they're not going to move any of that stuff in there or the granary. And this hitching post we can move and then eventually delete uh, when we don't want it anymore. So completely decoupling ourselves from that initial starting area. Man, it is really heaving it down, isn't it? God. And that's why we're getting all these warnings about our stuff being exposed. Now, we can take a little bit more time to go through bits more of the UI. Uh, so, we have the living space, right? How many houses are on the way? So, we've got five being built. Ten population, like I said. Eight, adult, uh, eight men and two women. Then we have an approval rating of 45%. Like I said, we need to get that above 50, which we can do once we actually start meeting demands within households. Public order, that's basically the same as approval. Um, but it's to do with more chance of crime occurring, as it says, and then bandits and stuff like that. I have never seen it affect anything, and I went pretty far into the game, so not too sure about it just yet. Regional wealth. That's the wealth in people's individual pockets and in their households. It's not necessarily yours, but you can choose to spend it on things for the people. Whereas your own money is tax that you get from that. So you can tax everyone a little percentage, drawing little bits away from them every month. That goes into your treasury, which you can use then for armies and retinue and things like that. Uh, diplomacy, bartering, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the actual trade down on the ground, anything that's kind of down on the ground for the people is just done with regional wealth. And you get regional wealth by upgrading houses. So at a standard level house, it doesn't make any money. But at a next level up, level two, it generates one wealth per family per month. The one above that, it's two wealth per month. Uh, so yeah, that's basically how that works. Then, if you have any excess goods and you trade for them, you can sell stuff that creates regional wealth as well. Alright, so our first house is actually done. Sorry I didn't get to quite see that one. We were quite zoomed out when it was being built. You can see this one coming together. They got one out of their two logs. So one of our families have moved in there already. And as you can see, we can expand the living space straight away if we just provide two extra logs. Just like having another house. Uh, we won't do that right away. We might do that when we later upgrade and we get a bit tight on space. Um, but it'd be fun just to have some really compact plots in there. They're almost like little guest houses. We can also add stuff out the back. So a vegetable garden, a chicken coop, a goat shed, and then tons of stuff that you don't get to much later. But it's quite interesting. If you played the demo, you used to be able to make a brewery. But there's no brewery in the game anymore. Instead, people do the brewing out the back of their houses, right? So a workshop appears in the house. So this is why I kind of have an idea for a main street here, a really busy compact main street and these guys will all have their extra shops built in and it'll be sort of like a shop street right you'll be walking along people selling stuff and then they go to the market to actually flog the proper things i guess but it's kind of like the workshops are all along the street so i think that's kind of nice it should look good all right speaking of our granary has just been finished not going to assign anyone to it just yet want everyone just free building still that's interesting. They're building the storehouse and the granary because these are medium priority, just like this house, actually. So, yeah. All right. So, the storehouse will be next. We have two Burgage plots, level one. The next one has its material. Our ox are delivering more material further down. Now, one of the cool things here is that these houses clearly can just be easily upgraded. Two timber can just be added on. And then another house will appear in the same plot. Very compact, like I mentioned. It's almost like a little guest house. So that's why I wonder what the drawback is for that. I haven't actually played around with it enough to know. Um, but we'll do that in the future. And definitely out the back, we'll assign different things. You can have a vegetable garden, a chicken coop, a goat shed. This all uses regional wealth. This is why you don't want to be taxing people too heavily. You need them to have some money to set up their own little things, I guess. You're just the one who tells them they can. <laughs> I guess you could think about it that way. Um, but yeah, you can actually get loads of stuff in here. So the bakery, the brewery, there's actually no brewery in the game. There used to be in the demo, but that's been changed now to be a workshop. These are called workshops that work out the back of people's houses, and then they take it to a market to sell it. And they'll have a permanent job at the market, if they can find a stall, to sell that thing. So it's 
really interesting, really different, quite complicated and layered how you get products to people. Um, but yeah, it should be quite fun doing that. And this, I think this street will be quite cool, having them really on top of each other, right, right next to each other. And all of them will have these little extra plots and these extra things working out the back of them. So it'll be like a little shop street, you know, a little market street, which could look quite cool. And then later on, you know, further out, we'll have bigger plots, more disorganized, more natural looking. And those will be more like just regular houses that are on the periphery of the town, if that makes sense. This is like our inner city main street. At least that's my plan. Now, we just got a warning about running out of fuel. So maybe we should get on that. It did go a bit quicker than I thought it would. I think it goes quicker when it's raining. I'm not 100% sure. Does it say that? Because this just dropped from 6 to 1. So something happened. Because <laughs> 6 months haven't gone by. Uh, but anyway, right. So let's go to Gathering. We have the Woodcutter's Lodge. Different than the... Um, what's the other one called? Logging Camp. This does cut down trees as well. It doesn't just take the logs and refine them. It actually cuts down its own trees and specifically then makes timber, uh, firewood out of them. So... We'll do that somewhere up here, because why not? It's not too far from our... Oh, actually... You know what? Yeah, we'll do it here, because we have a storage thing here. So right there, and then they can cut these trees down. And we can actually tell them where to cut, right? So if we go to the Advanced tab, we can say, I want you to specifically get these ones, or, or whatever. Leaving it blank... Whoops, sorry. Leaving it blank lets them just go wherever they want, for now, which is totally fine by me. Uh, just clear in a complete radius around them. They go to the closest trees, basically. And you could do the same over here, so I'm happy for them just to do that. But if you have um, some trees that are kind of popping up somewhere that you don't want them, it's nice to just target that and fell some trees that are in your town. I can't believe how, how much rain there is right now. It's so miserable. It really is England. Beautiful, though. Absolutely beautiful. All right, we're actually up to 13. So some extra people have moved into some of the houses now, which is nice. So that's just more hands on deck. That's not extra people we could assign to things. You know, we still just have five families to assign. But it does mean that certain families now are probably a bit more efficient because there's more hands on deck. All right, let's just speed things up and see how we're getting on. Uh, I guess while we're letting time fly, another thing would be the UI, UI up on the top of the screen, right? So up on the top right, you can see all of our resources here by hovering over. But if you're actually in a con context-sensitive menu, like construction, it actually changes your UI just to see the construction materials. So you kind of know what you have. So just by pressing C really quickly, you can just kind of quickly check our construction inventory, which is quite nice. Um, but yeah. All right. So yeah, we really need to get that thing should be high priority now. Get that built. It's actually got the material it needs. And then we'll assign a family to that so they can go out and start getting some firewood. It should be pretty quick. And they're right next to the storehouse here as well anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. walk straight through that. Conrad. By the way, all the names in the game, I'll be able to... I thought they were both called Conrad. All the names in the game, your names, channel members' names, will be in the game after this episode. Alright, so four of our houses are built, one more to go. We have our Woodcutter's Lodge. Just going to assign a family to that now, and that leaves one family unassigned to construct things. We currently have 31 timber, actually, which is great, so I'll actually just peel one family off of the logging camp for now, because we do have a bit too much. I mean, Doing really, really well over there. All right, good. So what have we got now? Generic storage is full. Oh, yeah, of that building. That's okay. Exposed goods. That's fine. They're going to be cleared now over time. There's only 10 bits of stone left. And the hitching post as well, which can actually be destroyed. We're going to move that. That doesn't need to be down here anymore. There's no more logs down here. And the ox is just waiting around doing nothing. So we'll bring him all the way up here. All right, daybreak. Still have to finish off this one little house here, but we're close. Now, how's our food situation and fuel? Fuel's getting better now, so we've gotten ahead of that, and food is all meat right now. So let's take a look at the houses themselves and see what's going on inside of them. So here, you can see that they need water access, a church level, fuel, food, and clothing. These three say stalls, right? They are under the market supply category. So we need to build a market, and then people will basically, whatever job they have, let's say that they're um, a hunter, a family will then find a d or build a dedicated stall and bring their meat to the market and sell it to people, and they'll take it from the market. I say sell it, you know, I guess it's inferred that it's sold, but they really just take it and bring it into their homes. That's how you supply people's homes. They don't just go to the hunting camp and take it. They don't go to a storehouse and take it. They have to go to a market and get it. So it's quite interesting. Like I said, it's layered. 
Um, but it all works from what I've seen. I've never had a problem with it. They all seem to get their stuff. There can be a delay to it, though, based on how far they are from the market. Uh, which is, I guess, why you'd want to maybe set up multiple markets rather than just one giant one, for instance. Alright, I'm going to up the priority back to medium just so we can finish off that house. Now, what else do we need in here or need to talk about? Mm, not much, but we need to get them water, right? So, let's go gathering, is it? Mining, logistics, residential, a well. So, nicely, there is room for a well right here. So, let's just go with that. Good spot. And that should be quick enough. In fact, we'll make that a very high priority. Probably going to be complaining about that soon enough. None of supplies. Yeah, you know what? I've actually never seen them saying that they need water. I wonder if they just kind of find it on their own. But the houses don't grow unless they actually have water access. I'm not sure. Because I've never seen anyone go like, oh, I'm thirsty. They do say I'm, t I'm hungry. <laughs> but yeah, not sure about the thirst level. Come on, man. Should be done by now. Why are you taking so long with it? The goods are already here. Just keep going. Now, new mercenary companies available. It's, it's actually really cool that you can scroll through all your notifications like that. Uh, we'll talk about all that stuff a little bit later when it comes to the military side of things. How are you feeling about our little area? I quite like it. I'm happy enough with it so far. Oh yeah, that's why they were in finishing the house. I put a higher priority on the well. My bad. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> they were doing good work on that. I just totally missed it. They just built that in the background. So the only last thing to build after that and this house would be... Um, we want to grab some berries. We're kind of low on food variety. So a forager hut. Our granary is right here. So yeah, I don't know. Forager hut just somewhere like on the road there a little bit. Maybe... Here. And we'll just connect that in. Kind of tough to see especially with all the rain but we have a little trail that goes in here curl around that's our forager hut and then just a little bit further out that's where we have the berries 64 so a really good amount there all full obviously it's seasonal though so we want to get that harvest going soon so we could probably ease off on the meat as we have a decent amount put more families on the foraging just grab as many berries as we can before they kind of expire All right, there we go. Settlement level increased. So this is the name of our settlement. We're gonna change this now because we got an, our first development point. So this is our development tree. It's just specifically for this region. It's not an overall tech tree. And in the development tree here, we can kind of choose to get more meat from some of the local resources, uh, doubles the capacity of berry deposits, do some beekeeping so we can have different buildings. It's the same with like if you want to have a bakery out the back of a house so you can have a bakery extension built into the burgage plots. So there's lots of cool stuff in here and then a lot of it is locked, early access, work in progress, that sort of thing. It's just quite cool just to kind of see this and it is region dependent so you kind of want to build it based on the fertilities and things you're tr trying to spec the region for. You're not going to get everything in one region, you know. Uh, so. We could maybe even decide on that a little later, but we do have good iron and good wild animals. So let's just open this up. So trapping enables hunters to skillfully lay traps in the forest, which give a passive income of meat. So we could double down on, you know, more food from the um, deposits that we have already. I don't think it's really worth it going into perhaps farming, except for livestock would be worth it because we know our fertilities are bad. So heavy plow, eh, not really, but something like sheep breeding, that makes more sense. And then we could sell that kind of stuff as well. Foreign suppliers, trade logistics, basic armor making, charcoal burning. So this allows people to make helmets, mail armor, and plate armor. And that's going to be way down the line, even if we did it right away. That would just take so long. Advanced skinning. Doubles the amount of meat harvested by hunters and butchers. I think we should lean further into the meat trade, as it were. And then maybe we could even sell that in the future for more. Yeah, we're going to go with trapping. I think then I'll go with advanced skinning. It might get the sheep as well. So we'll see how, how we get on. All right, trapping it is. Enables hunters to skillfully lay traps in the forest, which give a passive income of meat. I don't know if they need tools or anything to do that. It doesn't say, so. We've also got policies that we can get to a little bit later. And then the production tab is empty. I'm not sure what that's all about. We're going to rename our town now to Swords. Keeping it in line with many of the other cities I have in my various Let's Plays. We have a new message. 
A strong militia is paramount to the survival of any settlement. Luckily, a shipment of weapons has just arrived, and you'll now be able to create your first militia banners to serve you and protect your people. However, we will need more weapons to equip all the people as the settlement grows, either by making them or importing them from other lands. Let's form the militia. All right, we won't need that for a while, so we'll get to that really when we build a, a manor. Right, there's no point in having one now. You'd just be taking the few people we have, trying to form a loose company of like six people uh, with some weapons. And that's actually a starting condition of this particular map or scenario, which is you can turn this off if you don't want to receive shields or spears at all. I probably should have. I feel like I don't need it. You know, we could probably just have manufactured it ourselves, but whatever. It's a little bit of a helping hand. Should be fine. To be fair, our enemy starts with multiple regions and we're starting next to bandits, so I guess it's all, you know, all's fair in love and war. All right, or I'll take what I can get, I guess. Um, okay, so we're working on the fuel. Supply, we've only got two months of supplies. We really need more fuel coming in. So I'll tell you what, get another family in there. How many logs do we have? Still have 31. So it's time to just rapidly increase the things we're doing. We're going to put someone on foraging. Oh, I know what we need. So how do we upgrade our houses to start making some regional wealth? That's the big question. Well, we ultimately need to fulfill every pip here. So we need a marketplace and we need a church. Church would be a good one to get early on as well. Uh, but I suppose we'll do market first just to make sure everyone has their food and fuel. All right, so let's do that. So the marketplace construction will go with trade, is it? No, it's residential. There we go, marketplace. Uh, where is this market going to go? How about that? That looks actually pretty good. So a bit more of a, a disorganized shape should make the market look a lot more natural. So 61 market stalls. That, I'm sure that'll be lots and plenty. Now what we could do as well is just wrap a road around that. Should create a nice thick road for us to run along as well. The roads get thicker when it's like placed next to buildings because it's not just a little trail. It's now like a part of the city, I guess. All right, so that's a, the, the market's actually just built. You don't actually have to do anything to build it. But what we'll see now is people who work on a few of these different buildings will set up market stalls. So there we go. This family owns a market stall. If you unassign them, the market will have to be taken over by someone else. So basically, it's saying like, if they have a market stall, you don't want to unassign them completely from the, the building. Now, you can bring this down one. They'll always shift down. The market always takes priority. And then you can put another family on it or whatever. It's fine. But if there was two of these, we'd lose a stall. And you'd lose it until you get someone else to do the same thing. So you could actually affect your supply that way. It's kind of weird, but I think it's super interesting, but it's kind of hard to manage, I guess, is a better term for it. But anyway, there we go. All right, so that's our market. The next thing would be, let's get a church. Now for that, we're going to need planks. So we have to, um, what's the word, craft them or refine them down from timber. So we'll open up our gathering chain again. We have the saw pit. And we can pop that up next to our lumber yard, which would make sense, I suppose. So our first little bit of industry up here. Uh, yeah, somewhere there. Actually, I'm just going to build it maybe here, and we could build a road into it to clean it up a bit. Okay. And they've really gotten through this area big time. So I'm just going to tell them now to... Because we have so much... Just clear out some of the trees in these other places that we don't need them anymore, or want them. Let him get to work out there. How many do we have? 29 planks. Or 29, sorry, uh, timber, which means we can have like another 10, 5 houses here. Easy. But until we get to over 50%, they're not going to be moved into. Alright, we'll speed time up now. So, are we getting berries? No, we're still waiting on that to be done. Resource stolen by the nearby bandits. So this is one thing that's like, eh, it's a little early access, I guess, where we don't actually see them come in and take things. Now, they do come in and attack, but I think the local banditry that steals your resources, that's one of the only instances I know of where a resource just kind of magically disappears. But it's basically telling you, like, hey, bandits are next to you. They're taking your stuff. Now, at certain points, like I said, they actually rally together, bring in a force, and attack you. But that's not considered their... The same as how they just steal things. I suppose you could maybe abstract it and say, oh, I don't know, where you're carrying something, some guys just came along and took it. I don't know. So that's the only thing where I'm like, eh, doesn't feel good, but that's the only, that's the biggest standout early access thing in the game, I would say. So if you can get over that, I think it's all up from there. 
All right, construction finished of a food stall. So some of the first stalls are going down now. So unlike the demo, you used to put these down manually. Now they just get randomly, not randomly, they get placed down in order based on the things that people are making. This is a firewood stall. We can see this is the family that are in charge of doing that, right? So these guys have been assigned to making firewood. Uh, if we go to, this is the woodcutter's lodge, right? So we have Heinz, Veit, and Beatrix, right? So if we go to this thing here, we have a look at people. We can see that Heinz, Viet, and Beatrix are the people that are currently assigned to the Woodcutter's Lodge. And because of that, one of them, the wife, is now peddling the goods that they make at the market to give to people's houses. So that's like how it works, you know? <laughs> Again, layered, very layered, but interesting, organic, realistic, and actually it does sort itself out. So I was worried at first thinking like, oh my god, it's going to be so full of problems, but... Touch wood, I haven't had any so far, so hopefully it'll be all good. No pun intended there. Alright, how's firewood now? We're looking good. We're up back up to five months of supplies. We know that we're going to burn through a lot of firewood through the, through the winters. Just want to make sure we store up a lot of it. Uh, inside of the storehouse as well, you can choose what you store and what you don't. So as we get bigger and decide to build more things, we'll change maybe what goes in there. What has she got? I oh, yeah, he's got some meat. Firewood. That's a very deep voice. <laughs> Firewood. But not atypical for how English markets really are. That's uh, it's quite realistic. You you hear some bloke call over like, 50 strawberries, tea through pan," and you look over and it's like some 16-year-old girl, and you're like, "Jesus, you know, she's had it rough out there." Um, <laughs> but yeah. Hey, so just hovering over the marketplace here, we can see the supply and demand. This view doesn't show physical locations of goods, but instead it shows their availability. Buggage plots. That's right, buggage plots. That's quite funny that there's a text bug for the word burgage. That's spelled bug. Anyway, buggage plots nearest to the marketplace have the best availability of goods, and therefore can be upgraded faster. It creates a cascading effect, and houses on the outskirts will always have a worse time upgrading. All right, so we've just built ourselves a sawmill, saw pit. We'll take a family off of the woodcutters now. I think we're okay. And we'll put one onto the saw pit. Still want to have one free for actually constructing things. All right, so just been thinking about what to do next. Ultimately, we've enough stone to build the church, so we don't need to set up a stone mine or anything. But we don't have any planks, but we've just set that up now, so we should start refining planks. So that's all well and good. So I think what I'm going to do is just lay out the next five houses right across from these ones um, because yeah we'll basically want to fill these given some time so we'll just bring this out to about there so we're a little too close to that clay deposit actually so this one's going to be a bit further down the road I guess and we'll build these out in a similar fashion maybe come in a bit closer out there and we'll just do another five yeah so that's five in total let's go so another five they're low priority we're still building the forager hut oh no it's actually done sweet so we can put some people on that actually now so let's take them off meat now we need to clear some of the trees in here it's actually hard to see things especially at night time so this guy's marketplace is going to go away now but well, maybe we'll get a marketplace for berries so i'm not too worried about it all right i'm just going to fast forward through the night Maybe leave it as a mini time lapse here, just as time passes by. What do we have? By the way, exposed goods on the generic storage. So there's still a little bit of stuff out here that needs to be taken away. But the ox is working on it, and people will carry those stones when they're needed. So I, w I wouldn't worry too much about it. I think it's okay. All right, so we've got sunrise. I thought we should just get re-familiar with the overall layout, right? So we have Main Street here, where we have our five burgage plots, and then five more that are coming alongside it on the opposite side. They're being built at the moment. The first building up on our right is a woodcutter's lodge, felling trees around it to create firewood. That's all that does. We then have a storehouse where we can store that firewood and other things nearby the market so they can hopefully just go grab whatever they need. Further up then we have our sort of wood logging area, right? Our logging camp, cutting down trees, and then our saw pit where they refine them into the logs into timber. So the logging camp just stores up the logs. You don't store them in the storehouses. The oxes will take them to construction plots and things like that. They're too big to be put into storehouses, uh, I believe. Anyway, so yeah, the saw pit will make planks. They can be put into storehouses. We've already made five. So that's that. 
if we follow the trail into the forest, that's when we hit up against our hunting camp, which is currently offline. Just because I have the other family now working on the forager hut, which is just over here. And then we have a granary in between the two uh, to receive meat and veg or whatever we find, berries, etc. Uh, they can just sit in there until they're brought into the market in the future. So that's the overall layout that we've got. I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's pretty good. Uh, and of course the market. A big kind of hexagonal looking market here in the center. With a well right in front of it, which also makes sense, I think. Looks good. Lots of plots here to fill out this market over time, so we'll see how that goes. Now, we need to sort of scout out and think, where are we going to put the church? We're sort of, like, looking uphill, just ever so slightly up here. Not much, but ever so slightly. So somewhere over here, across from the market, I think would be good for a church, yeah? I don't see why not. And maybe, we also have to think, where's the manor itself going to go? Manor could be maybe down here. On the corner, on this sort of uh, Y-bend kind of junction thing. That could be a good spot for it. Yeah. Now these houses, like I said, they're going to remain empty until we get that approval rating up. So let's have a look at our approval right now. So we filled in the water access. They have fuel and food. They don't have any clothing yet, but we'll actually be making hides from the hunting camp and then we can change them into leather at the tannery. So we can supply clothes soon enough. It's just going to be the church and then we're basically waiting for uh, 15 more planks. So quite a few planks still waiting on. And that's fine. Yep. Okay, cool. Hmm, so rather interestingly, we didn't really make any planks at all. We've just made a bunch right now. And that's because the ox that was taking all the logs out of the logging camp was supplying the houses first, rather than supplying the saw pit. I don't know if we can avoid that problem or not. And I suppose just storing logs here. You can only store one at a time. Now, there is a construction reserve, but that's just so that you don't eat all your logs. Now, I have two oxes. I'm surprised that we couldn't have two oxes going back and forth. It might be because this one has a dedicated ox. Can we have two? No, can we have one? Hmm, yeah, a bit strange. Not that I mind too much, but it, it was interesting. I noticed it early on, so I was like, okay, I'll just let them finish those houses. But I wonder, do they have to be a lower priority? Or, you know, why didn't they fill this first? I don't know. Let me know if you know. Anyway, we have our five other houses now, so looking good. And now we're making planks. So pretty soon we can just get that church going. Just need five more. Especially since it's so close by, I just don't know why they kind of had that problem. I thought, yeah, just drop one there and then go off and do the, the houses, you know. But anyway, it's there now. It really feels like you should be able to hold more than just one at a time. But it is what it is. I guess you can assign an ox to this. Oh, okay. I guess that'd be the ideal. I wonder would it go off then and grab its thing and then come back? We could do that, just even temporarily to see is that the case while we're building the church now. And see if a, an ox dedicated to both works well. Uh, do we have enough, by the way? No, not yet. We need to just get sawing. Where are these guys? Agnes is crafting. She's on the way. She's here. Come on, Aggie. Yeah, there we go. Put your back into it. God damn. Damn! <laughs> She's working hard. Maybe got back. <laughs> Damn! Alright. <laughs> Enough of that. Yeah, she's working away. Working away. Doesn't matter if you're a man or woman. Anyone can saw some logs. And hopefully uh, we'll get a nice fat 20 out of that, which we've got. Alright, wooden church. Let's say somewhere right around here. Beautiful. I want a little bend in it as we come up. It just looks kind of nice. So the unassigned unassigned oxen are required for construction. Yeah, so no one's going to build a church because the oxes are busy, uh, you know, working for their own building rather than delivering something somewhere else. So that's kind of interesting. So I'd have to take the livestock guy off this then. Leave that one off. All right. Well, anyway, that's the church. So what was the other thing we needed? It was the tannery, right? Yes, the tannery. All right, so tannery will be in industry. And there we have it there. So workers use hides to produce leather. Oh, so we could have that up by the hunting. Makes kind of sense up here, right? Takes four logs. I'd say this can actually have priority for now because it has less construction material overall than this. Alright, we're into August. We're getting sort of close to winter. We have nine months of supplies, though. I don't know if that factors in 
the winter's double cost. I hope it does. Uh, and if that's the case, we should be fine. 55 fuel, they're working away on that. We still have a, a free family working on construction with all these houses free. Desperate to get that approval up before this episode wraps up so we can actually welcome our first new citizens into our burgeoning little town. It's quite cool. We've got the wines. Berries so plump and juicy. <laughs> come you on, eat them come by the bush or east your eyes. Oh my god. Alright, you got your berries plump and juicy. Oh, oh man, I might have to message Greg and ask him can I do a few lines. That'd be pretty funny. Specifically for female characters, please. Um, right, anyway, yeah, they're flogging their stuff. They're loving it. Food and firewood. But we'll get some clothing stalls popping up soon as well now, once this tannery is built. So, our plot for the church is there. We have one log delivered, nothing else. This one, we've got one log delivered. Man, it takes a long time. Right, let's speed things up. Ooh, a bandit camp was sighted. Where is this one popped up? Aha, so it's in the northwest of the map. Well, that's good. It's next to... It's next to, what is his name, Hildebolt? I keep wanting to call him Hilda. Yeah, it's Hilda. It's going to be Hilda from now on. So anyway, Bandit Camp has opened up next to him as well. So we've got two on the map now. So that levels the playing field just slightly. Uh, so I just noticed something that's kind of an interesting little tip here. The logging camp, for instance, if you go to the advanced tab and you limit, the, or you set the work area to somewhere like near where you're actually about to build something. So here, they'll knock these trees down and then the ox only has to bring it straight to the building what, that you're actually building. So that just happened for the tannery. I had it set over here. They knocked the tree down and just dragged it right there. It's another way of like kind of cutting down on the travel time. Just a little bit, maybe in the early game where it might matter to you, you know? All right, September, it's raining again, but we've delivered all the planks and all the timber to the wooden church site. They just need to get those 10 remaining stones, which were left outside. They're still down there. There's only seven now. I'm guessing that they just have been moved. All right, it's October. How much of our material has been delivered? Five timber, 20 planks, and six out of the 10 stones. So they've already been starting work on it a little bit. Should be up in no time once they get their material there. The tannery is just waiting, idling. Hunting camp is still offline while we're working on the berries. Instead, how's food? We still have 26 meat in storage. Kind of crazy. 42 berries. Berries are actually now totally empty, so we can unassign that. That's done. We could actually put them on herbs. We'll grow herbs for 25 regional wealth. I'm not sure we actually... I think you can get medicine and stuff from that, but I don't think we need it right now, so we'll leave it. Um, something we could use, though, would be our first little bit of livestock. Maybe a chicken coop. Yeah, so you get some eggs. That was so loud, but there you go. We'll put in a chicken coop at the back of this first house. So that was another 25 regional wealth. And they're there, just like that. Super simple. You just pay money for it, you don't have to do anything. It's them that are kind of setting it up, I suppose. And what they'll do is they'll actually set up a market stall to sell the eggs. At least that's the idea. Oh wow, that was super fast. Damn, I wanted to see it getting built and I missed it. I'm so sorry, but there we go. The wooden church, she did a great job. Who was that? That was Gerhaz. Beautiful, beautiful name. Anyway, she set up the church all well and good. So you actually need to assign a family to it. Let's go with that one. And yeah, we'll assign a family to that. And we'll assign a family to the tannery. And then we should see that we have water access, church level, and then with the eggs and the clothing, we should finally reach a good approval rating, I think. Tannery is open. The tannery is actually already assigned to a stall. So we've got our first batches of leather coming out. So let's check out these stalls. We have a food stall, firewood stall, and a clothing stall. So the food one's actually abandoned. Interesting. It was doing berries, but we took people off the berry job. Just to check on the economy really quickly, we have 23 timber, 45 planks. So that's pretty good. We can do a lot of building. We're just waiting on setting up the correct amount of stuff in these various... Oh, so we need a second type of food, which we should have. You know, we have 18 meat, 43 berries, and one eggs. So it's all about just waiting for someone to set up the right stall for it. Oh, I tell you what, I know what to do. We'll set them up at the granary instead. So they'll go and fetch stuff now. So if we go people, we can actually see what they're doing. Transporting, that's more like it. So now they're going to be moving stuff. And potentially, they might even set up a stall as well, I think, uh, if it tells us. 
Now, workers collect store and distribute goods using the pantry. If needed, they'll also automatically set up stalls on the marketplace to distribute the stored goods to the brokerage plots. That's exactly what we want to have happen. Hey, we've done it. We've done it. So we have everything, everything has now been supplied. So we can actually start to upgrade these. Oh, yeah. Nice. We're straight away up to 52. So clothing market supply, the church level, market food variety. People are loving it. And it just says the previous problem was homelessness. But that's not there anymore. The recent 30 days is only positive. So it's just going to keep trending upwards. It is a fine selection of things. You want to get your firewood. You want to get your meats. You want to get a little bit of clothing. Perfect. Keep your half warm. Love it. All right, so now, well, really now what happens is every month people are going to arrive, but we can also upgrade the actual places so they generate money. So let's do it. This is why we stockpiled so much timber. So we can't do it for the other ones, right? Because we don't have enough. Yeah, we just don't have enough timber, but you could do it for empty houses too. So anyway, we've just chosen to upgrade all of these to level two. And I think once they're done, we'll call it there for today. Now, interestingly, I don't actually have any free families to do construction, but upgrades, I believe, can be done by the family that live there. Uh, they might not bring the material over, though, thinking about it, but they can see that they're working on flattening the ground and stuff. So we could just take a family off one or two things for the moment. Because we've already committed to the upgrade. Um, so maybe the woodcutter's lodge? I think we've got enough for a while, over a hundred. And we'll finally lift the constraint of being not having any families to do anything. Hey, so I've got actually a really good tip here that I just found out. So basically, we have two oxen right now moving logs back and forth to our various upgrades that are happening right now. Now, previously, I just noticed that only one was doing it. And I was like, that's weird. Why isn't the other one? The other one was just sitting at a hitching post, not doing anything. So I decided to go to the advanced tab and deselect or unassign the livestock from the logging camp. And then, both of them were able to go back and forth. So it seems like if you assign it, then one ox is dedicated to that building. And they're going to be the ones that goes out and helps with the trees that have been chopped. But they're also going to be the one that distributes the materials to other places. And it won't allow other ox to do that. So that's a bit of a... What's the word? That hasn't been fully thought, thought through, I think. Or maybe it's a little oversight. Yeah, that's probably the best word. I think it's a small oversight that you kind of want a permanent ox there so that you're constantly, you know, you've got one dedicated to helping people bring the logs in. But you sort of want your other ox to be able to go and just grab the logs and move them elsewhere. So you could solve it by having multiple assigned, but right now the game only supports having one assigned, or just fix it. <laughs> how easy, how hard could it be, right? Just fix it. Yeah, you know what I mean, though. The other solution would be just to have, you know, the ox that are free be able to go to buildings and grab the materials if they need to. That would help. Uh, but yeah, just thought it was a good tip. You might be better off unassigning them. Because maybe they'll just do whatever they can then, rather than one sitting around doing nothing. Alright, so we're almost got our first... There we go. Burgage plot level 2. Super fancy. Looking a little bit better than the other ones. And they have their chicken coop at the back, making them eggs. But now we're finally going to be making just a little bit of money each month. One per month for five houses. So hopefully five per month. Alright, so we're just entering winter. We're going to be starting the next episode during winter. We've also just increased our settlement level and our... Unfortunately, our approval rating has just slightly gone down. It should creep back up, though. It went down because we unassigned the guy working, the family working on the woodcutter's lodge. So he's not selling his firewood at the marketplace anymore. So that's why it's a bit of a catch-22. But we're back up to 50. What does this mean? Requirements not met. That's fine. We'll get it. We're, we're going to be up in no time and we'll have more people come in. But I needed someone to build. I needed a family to build. So we can reassign them once this final, these plots are done. We'll put them back on the woodcutting and then we should be good. quite interesting. You actually see them deconstructing the house before they, like, build onto it. It's not just like an extension. It's a newly built house built differently than the others. So they're doing multiple at a time now. They're flying along. And our approval has gone back up, which is what we like to see. Market food variety. They'll be happy once they get their firewood again as well. All right, just one more to go. All right, wow, we actually just reached another settlement level. I wasn't even looking at what was necessary, but it was just a certain amount of level two houses. I think the first upgrade was 
three. Second upgrade was having five level two burgage plots, so we've done that. Uh, and then having, a, I think, ten pot plots overall. So just having both of those done now, we've gotten two points. I'm not going to spend the development points, though, just yet. I'll look into it in between episodes about what I really want. Um, I put a family back on this, so they should get their stall set up. And then as the months roll over, we'll actually finally have people coming in. Actually, we do. We already just had one. We've got a fifth, a sixth family, finally. Uh, but we just dipped under the approval again, so that's my bad. So I'm kind of trying to overbuild a little bit. I should really just sit back and wait until the stalls get set up. Uh, but yeah, once this one gets set up, then approval will just stay positive and it should be fine from then on out. So just took a little bit of extra time there, but finally our Woodcutter's Lodge has reset up their own market stall. So we always want to leave those guys now permanently in that position, just so those market stalls pretty much stay in place. We've also brought in a new family. We're going to be growing at one family per month, as long as our approval is over 50%. If we go over 75, we'll grow at two families per month. So we've got one unassigned, five assigned. It's January. I think we've made it through winter, basically. We've got 13 months of supplies. We're totally fine. But now that we finally got growth in our control, uh, we can finally start to actually, you know, build new industries, get more houses, more and more houses. And every month, we should be welcoming a new family in. And a family can be up to, you know, three, four people. So we can get more hands on deck, get things done faster, get things moved around faster. Looking forward to it. So I'd say we are well established now for the journey to come. That's got to be it for me. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, if you enjoyed the video and you just can't wait for more, consider becoming a channel member to get instant access to the next episodes right now. Of course, it's greatly appreciated if you just like the video, subscribe for more. Great ways of supporting for free. That's going to be it for me. And I'll see you in the next one.